Hello everyone and welcome back to Lakeside and uh, what did you think of Getz? Now this video is not about Getz, um, it's about something else which I bought at Getz but uh, obviously with that show just gone a week ago now, uh, a week ago today um, <clears throat> it's obviously on everybody's mind, there's loads of YouTube videos about Getz um, so there's no point in me saying too much about that because it's already been said um, but I had a thoroughly good time there with Rob, my friend from America. Um, we both enjoyed ourselves. It was uh, a lot to see, a lot to take in. And I'm glad we both went on the Saturday and the Sunday because it was so easy to miss um, stuff at the show in one day, especially with the crowds, um, because it was quite hard at times to get to see all the stuff there. Um, it was not too bad to see the stalls uh, where the traders were but to get to the layouts was quite difficult at times. Unfortunately for us we had to wait on a Saturday for this wretched bus to get us to the show. Um, now it's only what a five minute drive away but waiting for these buses because a couple have broken down apparently um, that was a bit much. Uh, we were waiting in line for an over an hour, which made us late for the YouTube meet and greet, unfortunately. Um, and <laughs> unfortunately on the Saturday, uh, me, Rob and Hazel went out for a meal in our local pub and I was thoroughly, thoroughly ill on Saturday night, Sunday morning, so much so that I really didn't think that I was going to make it on the Sunday. I was that ill. I was uh, sick and sick and sick, throwing up all the time during the night. Then I had diarrhea. <laughs> you name it, I had it. And I woke up Sunday morning thinking, do you know what, I can't do this. But I managed to pull myself together and uh, we went to the show on the Sunday as well but that was hard work that really was hard work for me but we managed it <clears throat> and because we left late then again we missed the YouTube meet and greet so that part didn't go down too well really for us but um, say so Saturday was the fault of the bus Sunday was my fault for for being ill um, but bugger that was not nice not nice at all. Um, I did meet a lot of people at the show, or well, we met, me and Rob met a lot of people at the show, uh, but, and I'm pleased that people were recognising Rob too, because he was thinking, oh, nobody's going to recognise me. Um, but they did, um, we had some chats with people, and that was great, really good. Um, I want to say a special thanks to um, Stephen, uh, for his generous gift uh, or gifts he gave me at the show. Uh, I've been wanting to meet Stephen for quite a while and it was nice just to briefly meet him for five minutes or so along with his lovely wife. Um, and uh, he gave me a fire engine which is over there on the layout and a bus which is up by the bus station and some plastic people. Um, Alan from Dragon Junction gave me one of his lavies. <laughs> Uh, I've got plans for that, so you can keep an eye out on the layout for that. Um, so yeah, it was a it was a, a, a good time. Even though I was ill on the Sunday, I, I, I still managed to have a good time. Um, so, what did I get at the show? Not much, to be honest. Um, I did buy a um, static grass applicator, which I was on the lookout for, to do my canal scene along there um, and I took Rob's advice because he thoroughly recommends this particular one which I'll show you in a minute um, and I managed to find one um, so I grabbed that while I could um, plus of course um, you may have seen on my Facebook page uh, or on Facebook rather um, some videos I put up of the other thing I've got which was a truck from Weissman which I bought from the 
stand at DCC train automation. I saw these on his stand, James's stand, at, on the Saturday and I was intrigued by them. I really was intrigued. I couldn't get over them. How they interacted with each, with each other. Um, it was, I, I couldn't step away from it. Um, but I had to because obviously there was all the show to see. So on Sunday I made another beeline for the stand and that's when I decided that I would have to get one to go up and down Kingsway High Street. Um, they are going to be introducing uh, more vehicles in the future, um, namely some buses and hopefully some cars too. But at the moment all they've got are trucks, which is okay because I can still utilise trucks going up and down the high street. Um, and I can prepare the high street for eventually when buses start coming online because then I can buy a bus and that will suit that roadway perfectly. Obviously with the bus station. I've still got my Fallon bus um, but that in comparison to these Weissman vehicles isn't a patch. All it does is go up and down the high street and stop once at the bus station. With these Weissman vehicles they, they just blew me away. They just blew me away with what they can do. So with that what I'll do I'll take the camera off the tripod and uh, I'll show you what I've got and hopefully see them going up and down the high street. Okay so I'll see you in a minute. Hello again. Right so in front of you you can see the trucks or uh, which I've bought. Now this is the one which I bought on the um, Sunday at the show which is a starter kit so you get the truck plus you get a few other bits and pieces with it as well being the starter kit and the red one or maroon one um, I bought a couple of days after. Um, so I'll show you those a little later. That's the static grass applicator which I bought and it's the Woodland Scenics version and the reason why I bought this one is because it's mains powered well it's not mains powered it's powered by a um, power supply into the mains um, it does have the facility in there to have a battery so you don't you don't have to have it mains powered you can put a battery in there as well um, I had a look at some other static grass applicators um, but in the end I decided when I saw that they had one left of this I decided to get this one um, so that will come in very handy for when I start doing the remaining canal scene so I should look forward to doing that. I've got some static grass left over um, so I can utilize that but I will need to get some more because I need um, reeds, I need long, very long grass too. Um, so I shall have to get some of that. So on to the main thing. Oh, that's the fire engine which Stephen gave me. Thank you, Stephen. And up here is, if we take a wander up the high street. That's the bus Stephen gave me, which is now waiting outside the bus station. So I really appreciate that Stephen, that's uh, really um, gone down well. Fantastic, thank you. Um, so, on to these trucks. So, there's two versions really, you get a starter kit and that is the truck which you get in the starter kit. Um, I think they only do one starter kit which is this blue one with a tipper on the back and the tailgate opens too. Um, this one, the maroon one, is not from the starter kit, it's just the truck. And what you get in a starter kit, I hear you ask? Well, what you get is 
a series of magnets, tiny magnets, like, where's my hand, like these, Ooh. so these are the very powerful neon type magnets, and these go into the roadway. So you drill a four meter, four millimeter hole, and then you pop one of those, depending on the kind of activation you want, whether you want to slow it down or to stop or do whatever you want. Um, you have those facing north or south pole, dependent on what you want to do. So if it's north facing up, that signifies or tells the truck to stop. If it's south facing up, then it's saying to the truck to slow down. Um, and I think I'm right in saying that I need two south facing up to slow down and one to stop. And that's really what I'm, I'm doing now. I'm sorting that out. Um, but I've got them to stop at the zebra crossing, which I'll show you. Um, what I haven't done yet is to do it so that they slow down before they stop. Um, so I've just got to drill a couple of holes and uh, hopefully that will work. Um, so you get a little controller. This is additional. You don't get this in the starter kit. Uh, you have to buy that and I think it's about £16, something like that. Um, and so what you do is that you can control the vehicle using this gizmo here. It's operated through infrared so it's got an infrared sensor at the front which transmits and the truck has sensors at the front underneath the bumper and sensors at the rear just where the number plate would go so what it does in theory you see, if you have two vehicles like that, one following each other, if this red one is going faster than the one in front, this is sending out a signal at the back. This red one picks that signal up and slows down to the same speed as the one in front. So you're not going to have this one crashing into that one just because that's going faster it slows down um, you can also divert uh, the vehicles off in a direction so you can have underneath the road is a is a wire which is from the old fallow system that was another reason for buying this because I didn't have to redo this roadway um, because it is completely um, torrent of the wire although they do sell magnetic tape which you can put on the road so that if you didn't have the wire you could use their magnetic tape um, but because I've got the wire down there already uh, this is one of the reasons which attracted me is that these are fully compatible with that wire system because underneath is exactly the same system as the fella. So that metal piece here is identical to the fella. So at the front here is a magnet and that magnet follows the wire buried in the road down here. So that's how you get the vehicle to um, follow the route it's just the wire or magnetic tape and it is guided underneath here by that arm with a magnet on uh, so for instance up here I wanted the buses or the trucks to stop at the zebra crossing so if you look down there I've drilled one hole and put a magnet in, north facing up, and that tells the truck, if we go back down here, to stop. And it tells it from 
that area, put it upside down, this area here, this area here, it has a sensor inside that. So when it goes over the magnet, it says to the magnet says to that stop because it's facing north upwards. If it's facing south upwards, it would tell this to slow down. And it has inside here a coreless motor, very thin, long coreless motor. And it just tells that to do that. Now, that whole chassis is a PCB. And I think, I'm not sure, but I think the sensors are built into the chassis. So whether I can adapt that or not to go into a bus, it's highly unlikely. Because it is just, for me, far too complex. Um, I mean, you can see the sensors just there, those two shiny things there at the front. They are sensors for the front, and we've got the same thing at the back, just here. Um, now, whether I can manipulate that to fit inside a bus, I doubt it. Not on this occasion. Um, and at £200 a pop, I'm reluctant to try and take this apart and see if I can adapt it. Because if I can't, that's £200 up the spout. Um, so I think what I'll do in this case, uh, I mean there's probably people out there who could manage it, but not me. Um, I think what I'll do, I'll wait until they produce a bus or a car um, so that I can buy it outright and I won't have to destroy a truck in the process. So it's just a case of, as per normal in this game, waiting. When there's a new loco coming out, we wait one, sometimes two plus years before it actually comes out uh, when it's first released. So, again, you know, it's a case of just waiting. And I can wait because I've got to. Um, I just where I was, it's the magnets. Um, I've got to prepare the roadway um, by drilling a couple of holes, inserting magnets, getting those lorries to behave as, as they should by coming up here and slowing down and then eventually stopping. And likewise, coming this way, doing exactly the same thing. To the bus station, I already have underneath here a coil which stops the bus, the old Faller bus, this one here. Um, it, the bus will come along and if I pressed that button it activates a coil which then stops the bus. So I already have that and that coil is also compatible with the trucks. So there isn't a huge amount of work to do on the roadway to get these working. Uh, in fact, they work now. Um, it's just that I need to refine them. Now, refining them is through um, a program you download. It's PC or Mac, and you download that, and you plug that there, and if you can see that, you plug that into the bottom here, into that area there. It's got six pins in it. So you literally just plug that into there, and then you plug the other end into your PC or Mac through a USB cable. That then talks to the program, <clears throat> and the program is just like um, a DCC locomotive, where you are altering the variables, in other words, the CVs. 
So you're going in there and you are telling it to, for instance, slow down at a certain point um, in speed. Um, you are telling it to drive away at a certain speed. So you can alter all that from its default settings when you get it from the factory. So it is a case of just like our locos, you change the CVs on it to suit your own recommendations. So, you know, it becomes a very, very useful piece of kit. Now, you don't have to download the um, software if you don't want to. They are at default settings from the factory, so they work. Um, it's just whether you prefer it yourself to have them slightly differently, put it that way. But in the meantime, you can control it all via this little handheld um, module here. So you can put the flashing lights on, you can turn the flashing lights off. Um, I mean, these sort of things are just amazing. They've got headlamps, but they've also got dipped headlamps. So you can have it on main beam or dip beam. You can turn the flashing lights off on the roof, or you can have them on, it's up to you. It's got indicators left and right at the front and at the back. It also has reversing lights because that little symbol there, the arrow here, if you keep that held down, it will go in reverse. So if you're reversing, you can have this reversing into a um, an area which you're picking up something for instance and then when you pick it up you can drive it out forward <coughs> and it, it has the reversing lights I'll show you all this in a minute um, so you know it's very very clever and very interesting to watch now I won't be able to utilize a lot of that on this particular part of the layout at the moment but what I'm thinking is, we come up here, because all it does at the moment, bearing in mind I did this for the fallow system, it goes round the back of the bus station and then goes all the way down the high street, turns round and comes back up, which is fair enough, that's what I designed it for, for the fallow. But now I've got these trucks and I know that it's a possibility to do all the other stuff, I could, if I want, bring off another piece of wire or a piece of magnetic tape and bring that down here. And I can even bring it along here, hence the reason why I've got the bus here at the moment. I can bring it along here because it makes no difference to the chain underneath I've got uh, for the bikes. Um, so I can have it stopping and then I could perhaps have it turn round in this area here. So there's lots and lots of things I can do. Um, all I've got to do is design it and try and make it work. So it doesn't have to now be reliant upon what I've got for the Falakar system. But it is completely compatible to it. That's the nice thing about it. So I won't have to do anything with the high street at all apart from inserting magnets to make them stop or slow down. Hence the magnets. And you get those magnets in the starter kit with this truck. So, what I will do, I'll place the camera somewhere so you can see it um, and I will start these off and um, I might have to pick it up again actually but we'll see um, and uh, I'll show you how it all works okay so I'll see you in a minute hello again right um, so we've got the um, first truck in position so to start it all I need to do is with the controller or a little wand they supply in the in the kit um, you just hold this above to activate it 
and off she goes. As simple as that. So that's now trundling away. <clears throat> if I get this other one roughly in position, that should be about right. I'll start that off in a minute and I will have that running slightly faster than the blue one. Um, and uh, I start it off in exactly the same way with the controller and because this is travelling slightly faster this will catch up with eventually with the blue one which is up there approaching the bus station so let's start this off okay so it's found the wire and you can see that uh, that is travelling just a little bit faster than the, the blue one. But it will eventually catch up. Now because of the door mirrors that kind of sometimes catches on the trees but I think I've got them cleared now. So there, the two are passing now and you can see how much slower that one's going than the red one. And that's controlled from here, the speed. Now that should stop, which it has, and you can see the brake lights have come on. And you'll see them go off after 10 seconds because I programmed it to stop for 10 seconds. There you go, brake lights are off and it continues on. In the meanwhile, the red one is catching up gradually. This will stop for 10 seconds. But I want that to slow down and stop, I don't want it just to stop. See the brake lights, they'll go off shortly. There you go, now it's off again. So I should think by the time it gets round to about here, they would have caught up. I've got a dodgy bit of road there. Now when it catches up, <clears throat> there's about four or five inches and this red one will sense the blue one in front and will automatically slow down to the same speed as this blue one. And hopefully you will see that shortly. Right, any minute now it will sense it. There, it sensed it and now has slowed down to the same speed as the blue one. <clears throat> it should come behind the bus station now. follow each other now like that. It's going to be interesting actually, I've not tried this, when that blue one stops whether the red one will as well. We'll soon find out. Yeah it has. And it's slowed down rather than just stopping. So that blue will go and the red one will then follow. Look at that, absolute magic. Absolute magic. He stopped because he's aware of the magnet. Still people crossing. And off he goes. And he will catch up again. But now he's defaulted back to its original speed which I set it at until he catches up with the blue one again which is here. any minute now here slow up to the same speed as the blue one there we go and 
and they will follow each other like that. Okay, so let's stop these and you just put this over the top to stop it. Like that. And like that. So the button has stopped. <coughs> Um, I can stop it via this by just um, pressing the uh, stop button here that powers it off, this red one. So I don't have to use the wand or that to stop it, it can be done via this controller but it has to be in sight, in line of sight of the vehicle so it has to be kind of here. To stop it if you use a controller or above it to activate it. <clears throat> so you can see the, uh, the benefits if I have say a couple of buses going around. Um, if I start this one I will show you This button here, if I press that, it's activating a coil just here and it will stop. Just there. And then start again. Again after about 10 seconds. Which is primarily for the bus stop. can deactivate it here like that and that shuts it down completely lights are off everything so there you go this is going to have a lot a lot of fun and when these are traveling the trains and the trucks are going then it's going to create a nice lot of movement along here Plus I've got the lift going up and down as well. So many people have said, when am I going to get people actually crossing the road? Well, you show me a link somewhere where I can get walking people, and then I'll have a look at it. But until then, unfortunately, the people are static. Okay, folks, that's about it for now. I <clears throat> um, hope you've enjoyed that and seeing that. I'm certainly getting a lot of fun out of these. I think they're fantastic. Uh, yes, they're more expensive than the Fala analog cars and buses, but um, the analog ones, as you know, are just purely analog. They just go round and round, and with the help of sunken coils you can get them to stop at certain points nowhere near as much fun as these with working lights reversing lights making them reverse um, yeah they're just absolutely fantastic so I can't wait for when they introduce the the buses <coughs> particularly the buses um, and hopefully cars as well Okay, uh, I think that'll just do this video now. So thank you for watching, um, and um, I will speak to you again soon. Probably the next video will be something to do with the canal, I would think. Okay, so bye for now. Bye.